You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. Glad you could join me here. Excited to get into our Friday review, where I can't wait to go over the best of the past week, as well as what we have coming in just the next two weeks. So looking forward to this show, as always, my time to be able to kind of take you inside of our practice, let you know what's going on over the last week, but also what we have coming. And that to me is always the more exciting thing. It's always looking forward. What new things can we be doing? What more can we be doing to take our health to that next level? And also to keep us motivated, to keep us inspired in order to even want to keep going, right? To want to do more. Because a lot of times it's so much easier not to go to the gym. It's so much easier to go along with everyone else and you know, have a cheat meal or have alcohol every single night of the week, right? There's always something going on that kind of gets in the way of us living our healthiest and best life. So what I want to do each and every day is just kind of keep us focused, keep both of us on track to trying to do more of the things that we know that in the long run, not that day, but in the long run will better move us towards better health, And if we can do that, then we're better able to enjoy the life that we want, right? Because it's all about if you change your body and or if you keep your body healthy, it's going to then reciprocate and do for you the things that you wanted to do, which means if you want the clear mind, if you want the focus, if you want the energy, well, you need to be careful of what you put in your body and also the amount of sleep that you give it, the amount of movement that you give it, all of those things that matter. So That's what I love to chat about on a daily basis. And on Fridays, I like to bring it all together. So for example, this week in our practice, we're talking a lot, a lot about how we can really help people make the shift at the end of the summer. So you know, a big thing for me is I try to spend this last week up in Maine. I try to spend more time with family. And there's absolutely a little bit more liberal eating going on at that time. There's no doubt about it. Like most people, end of the summer for a lot of people. I know in Australia, we're not exactly end of summer here, but we still do have changing of the seasons. And so as we move with that changing of the season, it's a time for renewal. And I'm, I'm going to be talking about that on this Monday podcast as well, no doubt about it. But what I wanted to share right now is this, is the way that I'm able to try to reset every single 90 days is that I follow the Ayurvedic principles as well as all the Eastern-based philosophies of doing a seasonal-based detox. And you can go back, you can listen to episode 823, you can listen to episode 846, and you can listen to why this is so crucial. Now, more than ever in this day and age, when we are not only exposed to, but infected with over 77,000 made-made chemicals. And I'm so happy to see that more and more people are being receptive to saying, okay, I don't want to put these toxic skincare products on my body. I don't want to feed these toxic foods and food dyes to my children, right? I don't want to be cooking with aluminum foil. I want to be doing these things that I know that not in one day, but over time lead to heavy metal toxicity, environmental toxicity, uh, all sorts of leaky gut, intestinal permeability, which can lead to autoimmune issues, skin issues, headaches, migraines, et cetera, that they don't want to be doing this. And I, I mean, that nothing makes me happier because these are the invisible things that we're being exposed to that absolutely can be tested for. So it's it's scientific. Remember, this is all science-based. Well, a functional medicine detox is also science-based. And all you are do, doing truly is ramping up what's called phase one and phase two liver detox. You don't need to know how that works, but if you ever want to know how it works, if you want to know why a functional medicine detox is different than a detox tea or a fast or juicing or any of those things, then you can tune into episode 8, 
23. I want to confirm that. I want to make sure that that's the show, but that is it. The right way to complete a 7, 14, or 21-day functional medicine detox. Listen to that show. It will take you step-by-step of what your liver needs to be able to break down these harmful fat-soluble toxins and be able to remove them safely from the body. And, And that show teaches you exactly how to do that. Okay. So what we do is we do our community detox each and every season. So we do one in September. We do one in January, one the end of March or beginning of April, and then we do another one right before 4th of July. So that gives us our seasons. That gives us our fall detox coming up, and then we have our winter, spring, and summer. And that essentially means every 12 weeks. Every 12 weeks, ideally, the first one you do is 21 days. And then after that, you can do a 21-day every single year, or and or you could participate with us over 1,000 people strong completing it last time. And I hope that you complete it with us this time as well. That's on September 9th. That is a Monday, the Monday after Labor Day here in the United States. But you're welcome to complete it anytime you want. I mean, honestly, whatever works for you, that's great. I just can't recommend enough either joining our community. It's completely free at cabralsupportgroup.com. My team and I post there daily of our seven-day journey. And again, you can continue on for a longer period of time. Or what you could do is you can work with your local integrative health practitioner or maybe a local functional medicine doctor, naturopathic doctor. That would be totally fine as well. So what we're doing right now, though, I know until this Sunday, if you're listening to this podcast, hopefully on time, on Friday, we're actually offering $99 off on that. You can listen into the end of the show if you choose to participate with the community. Really simple. Basically, you buy three seven-day detoxes and you get one free. Again, Never need to do it with equilibriumnutrition.com if you don't, but it's there for you if you'd like to. It's just our way of saying, hey, maybe you get three with your friends and get one free. Maybe you're doing a 21-day and we just want to offer you another one. You can do it 12 weeks later. Or you want to do a seven-day each quarter. This will set you up for the next year. So again, my job is to say, how easy can I make this for people? I mean, that's where I feel it's at. We already know how to help people heal. We know how to help them lose weight. We know how to help them live longer. But what we don't always know are the exact cues for every individual that will help them to participate in their own health. How? Can, I mean, I would love to learn more about that. Like, how can I help with that? The free Facebook group where we answer hundreds and hundreds of comments on a near daily basis. The Ask Cabral on the weekends. You know, we have our email support. It's just saying like, how do we keep people inspired to continue to work on their own health? Because we know it's a daily journey. And how do we help take to the next level? That's what we want to do. And we're all heirs. We really are. So hopefully that's helpful. Next up on the show, before I get to an ADHD-based protocol, some new research on saffron, and that's going to be mainly it. And I wanted to do, before I get to that, I'll share a little bit of lab work there too. But you know, one thing I wanted to chat about is just the, the issues that are there with conventional-based medicine. Again, Every time I talk negatively about conventional medicine, which essentially that's the normal Western-based medicine, you go to your PCP and you you know, you know run your blood work once a year and they tell you everything looks normal and then you're considered healthy, even though you don't feel healthy, right? Like one of those famous quotes is, my doctor says I'm fine, so why do I feel so bad, right? That's one of those famous ones. Well, here's the thing. They have a name for everything now. And so when you go in there and they're like, oh, you have X, Y, and Z, you're like, oh, good, I, I have this you know, diagnosable disease. And now they can give me this medication and I feel normal because I was told it's a disease and it's genetic and I have this mutation or this or that. But here's the thing. Every time you get told that, it takes away a little bit of your own power. It takes away your ability in mindset to be able to understand that most of this, if not all of this, is within your control. And that's because as an adult, you get diagnosed with everything under the sun. And you look back and you say, why didn't I have this at six years old, 12 years old, 18 years old, 24 years old? Like, why didn't I have any of these issues then? Well, over time, again, you have the same genes, but over time, those genes have been unlocked, turned on by the environment. And the nice thing is this, is that if you don't believe the hype in conventional-based medicine, and you understand that you can take control of your own health, And that if you empty your rain barrel, you begin to reverse dis-ease in the body. The other thing is this, is just understand that there's a name for everything. Last weekend on on the house calls, hopefully you tuned into those. You know, I really, on the weekend house calls, and I know that um, I'm sure it'll be the same this weekend as well, 
I oftentimes find myself going on these rants because I just say like, listen, this is a made up name for a disease. Like this is a name for a conglomeration of symptoms that you got because you have deficiencies in your body or you have toxicities in your body and most likely you have both. You know, another crazy one that I've heard a few times this summer is Skeeter syndrome. And someone asked me that. I said, I've never heard of Skeeter syndrome. Like, I, what are they talking about? Let me go look this up. And I look it up. And this is actually on a house call. And I go, Skeeter syndrome. All right, let me, let me type this in. Let me check out what this is. And I said, okay, it's papular urticaria. So what does that mean? Well, it means like an allergic reaction, a hive type thing. It's a localized allergic reaction to mosquito bites. And I said, they've come up with a syndrome now for mosquito bites. And I was like, this is completely insane that we now, oh, no, 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 my child has Skeeter syndrome, can't go outside, this, this, and the other thing, where we have to understand is that, yeah, an allergic reaction is not good. These are not talked about as life-threatening. These are a child that is now currently, they're more sensitive. Why are they more sensitive? Like, why are they reacting to mosquitoes in this way? Well, these are all tip-offs. Does the child have multiple food sensitivities? Does the child have a lack of magnesium in the body? Do they have too much copper? Do they have heavy metals? Do they have intestinal permeability, right? Are they allergic? Are they sensitive to gluten? Are they sensitive to dairy? Is that why they're having these reactions? Because their rain barrel is already full. They have so many cytokines being produced in the body. They have so many histamines in the body. The histamines are not being degraded. So again, these are tip-offs. This is not to say, oh, my child has Skeeter syndrome. This is to say, why does my child react so egregiously to mosquitoes, right? And these are all important things to look at. Never mind that children are more sensitive in general, typically, to their environment. And that's why a lot of these things are downgraded as adults. You know, they're basically that why they are outgrown as an adult. Well, the immune system is less sensitive in many of these regards. So again, I want you to always heed medical advice, okay? Especially if it's a life-saving condition. I'm not saying that you should not be listening to medical advice. What I'm saying is, get multiple opinions, do your homework. It's your body. Don't let a naturopathic doctor, an integrative health practitioner, a functional medicine doctor, an orthomolecular, any doctor, don't let anyone or any health coach take away your power to heal. This is your body. It's your mind. It's your body. Do your homework. Don't believe that your PCP is infallible or any health coach is infallible. They are not What you want to understand is that most doctors, most PCPs are seeing 30 people a day, every day, hundreds of people a week, because it is a factory machine, right? And if you're working with a health coach, at least they're probably not going to be seeing more than five, six, or eight people maximum a day. So you get more of their attention, more of their time. That's a good thing. I believe that everyone should have an integrative health practitioner or some type of natural health practitioner and everyone should have their medical doctor, right? That's a great thing. Why can't we have both, right? Why can't we use both? Life-saving, acute-based conditions. Go to your emergency room. See your PCP as needed. Once a year, check in. Run your blood work with them. Great. But remember, blood work is not the end-all be-all, and it hardly tells you anything until you're in a disease-based state, and by then you've let it go too long, right? You can still fix it. I'm not saying you can't, but would love to have you working on that ahead of time. All right. So that's my rant for the day. What I'd love to do now is is end on a more happy note and talk about an herb. That's why I remember nature gave us everything we need to heal, starting with food and we have sleep and we have movement. Like all of these things matter. In the rain barrel effect, I talk about the de-stress protocol. It's all in there. Everything I do, it's free in that book. It's exactly how I practice. Doctors and practitioners, and about third people listen to the podcast are in the health based profession. You can copy that and you can use it with your clients. And you can say, okay, we're going to work on diet. And then maybe next month we'll work on exercise. And then maybe we'll work on stress reduction. And then maybe we'll do a detox and, and remove toxins. And we'll work on rest and the parasympathetic nervous system. And then we'll work on emotions as we start to you know, feel healthier and, and we're doing better. And then we can work on a supplement protocol and then we can work on success mindset. Or maybe, maybe we can work on all of them at the same time and not have to believe that we have to be perfect, but just that we have to be moving forward. That's it. Move forward, mess up, make mistakes, 
be lighthearted about it, learn from it, and continue to march forward. That's what it's all about. Very few things in life will you ever master the first time. And if you did, it probably wasn't something you're going to get a lot of satisfaction from. Work towards a worthy goal. I'm telling you right now, you'll find more satisfaction in life. And when you do achieve it, you'll be most likely elated. Your self-image will be better. Your self-confidence will be stronger. And you'll want to share your success with others. All right, let's talk about ADHD. Let's talk about mood, mind-based issues. This is an herb, an herb that I talked about and spoke about before in its success with things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, other neurological issues. And it's called saffron. You probably heard about it. It's a spice used in many Middle Eastern, some Mediterranean, different cultures use saffron. It's a prized spice. It's a beautiful, bright red, sometimes a bright orange spice. And what you can do, well, you can actually use the saffron extract as an herbal-based medicine. And herbal-based medicines, remember, are and were the medicine of every form of medicine except for conventional medicine. And even in conventional medicine, they take about 50% of all pharmaceutical drugs. They've tried to patent certain herbal extracts. So the problem is... When you change the structure of the herb itself into a patent, which means that you can be the only one who uses it. That's why they do that. Make no mistake about it. They don't do that to make it better. They do it to make money. Because anything that you see at, that we use at Equilibrium Nutrition or any of your favorite companies, again, I'm about promoting functional medicine. So if you like Thorn, if you like integrative therapeutics, if you like Pure, if you like any of these great brands, then fantastic. Good. Happy for you. And as long as you're getting the results, then get those results, right? But here's the thing. None of those things can be patented. No, or none of those things, I should say, can be used not for anyone else. Like There are patented versions of the collagen that we use that are the best in the world. We use three patented versions, but anybody can use them. Like They're not ours that we patented. Manufacturers made them to be more absorbable. But here's the nice thing. In natural medicine, we want the best for people, right? We're not trying to just say, hey, this is our billion dollar patent. Nobody can use this. Anything that you see, you can pretty much get, but we do it in very specific formulas. Well, we don't have a specific saffron-based nutraceutical or nutrient. What I'm going to do is give you a couple other companies. I don't have the exact one that I would love to be able to give you because I can't find it yet, but I will continue to work on it. And remember, this podcast is evergreen. So today is episode 1302, okay? 1302, and let me see if I can find it here. On 1302, I am going to link up the saffron herb, and I'm going to give you the actual studies in just a second. But in the future, if you're listening to this and it's episode 2000 of the Cabral Concept, well, you can go back and I'll probably have a new one there, right? Because I'm going to update it. I'm going to make sure that this is evergreen. Okay. Here's the thing. Let me give you the statistics. So again, I've talked about saffron in its benefits with Alzheimer's, but I'd love to talk about it with you now in the clinical studies with ADHD. Okay. So let me pull this up for you right now. This is called, uh, well, the actual herbal name for saffron is Crocus sativus. And I apologize if that's the improper pronunciation, but it's C-R-O-C-U-S, sativus, S-A-T-I-V-U-S. And it's first a very popular ADHD medication. So it's um, Crocus sativus, and it's in the treatment of children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and it's a randomized double-blind pilot study. So this was done, essentially nobody knows the subjects taking the capsules as well as the people administering this did not know who was being given what. Well, here's the thing. Children between the ages of 6 and 17, there were 54 of them, they completed this study and did tests at week 3 and week 6. So they gave them the same exact dosage of both, about 20 to 30 milligrams a day based on the person's weight. Okay, So it was done on um, 20 milligrams for anyone under 30 kilograms. Keep that in mind. 30 kilograms is what? 2.2 times 30. That's 66 pounds or so. Okay, so if you weigh under 66 pounds, or your child does, you'll want to use 20 milligrams. 
And if your child weighs more than 66 pounds, then, or again, 30 kilos, then you would use the 30 milligrams. And again, I can't give you medical advice. I'm just showing you the study. And I will also link up the study at stephencabral.com forward slash 1302. So here's the thing though. Very short study. I'll also link up, I believe it's Psychology Today. Is it Psychology Today? Yes, it is. It was published there. This was published uh, very recently in April, April 4th, 2019. And it was a landmark study published in the Journal of Child and Adolescent Psychopharmacology. And it showed unequivocally that saffron worked just as well. It worked just as well as the popular ADHD medication, which is essentially a methamphetamine. So legalized speed. I mean, that's really what we're giving our children. Let's call it what it is, right? It's one molecule away. So here's the thing. I want to help kids just as much as anybody else. There's no doubt about it. And I don't think anyone's trying to harm children, whether it's conventional medicine or natural medicine. There's no doubt about it. But what if we could use something a whole lot more natural? And we're finding that saffron is actually helping to balance dopamine, norepinephrine, and GABA. The exact mechanisms and pathways are not fully understood. However, I feel a lot more comfortable using an herbal-based extract such as Crocus sativus or saffron than I would using any type of methamphetamine. So what I'm going to do is link this up today. I will link up two products. One is about three times the dosage. It's about 88 milligrams. Okay, so if you use that, remember, you would only use about one-fourth to one-third of a capsule. And then there's another one. Let me just check the stats on that. This one's at 32 milligrams. Purposely not uh, giving you the names yet because they may change in the future. The name doesn't matter. Uh, What matters is the dosage, right? Because a lot of these companies sell saffron as well, but it's five milligrams, right? You need 20 to 30 milligrams a day as a clinical to, to work clinically. And I would give it in the morning at breakfast. That's when I would give it. So I'm going to link them up today. You will probably have to log into a special online dispensary. It's for doctors only. So I, I have to give you uh, brands that are, I would say, approved. I can't send you to Amazon. I don't know. It's like the Wild West there. I don't know what you're getting. I don't even know if there's saffron in it. So what I want to do is I want to set you up with a... Um, it's not my company, but it's an online dispensary that we use for our uh, private wellness clients as well. So I'll I'll link that up today in the show notes. Super simple. You set up a free account and then you're welcome to purchase whatever you'd like from there. Okay. Just again, something we're trying to do for people that I believe is just helpful to be able to get them things that we can't offer at equilibriumnutrition.com. Okay. So that is that. But here's the thing. Very, very important. Do not stop listening about the ADHD is that we don't go there first. With ADHD, we want to look at balancing the body at a much deeper level. And that's the truth. So I'd be remiss if I would say, all you need to do for ADHD is give saffron. That, that is not the proper thing to do. I still don't believe that without a doubt. Yes, it works exceptionally well, especially for the 30% of children that react very negatively to meth-based products. Okay, So here's what I want you to do. What works really well for most children with ADHD is zinc, magnesium, B vitamins, a product called Adrenal Soothe, and omega-3s. So if it was my child and you weren't able to lab test, which I'm going to share with you in one second, I would definitely be using foundational level protocol number two. Okay? That's omega-3s, a daily probiotic, a greens powder, daily fruit and vegetable blend. We have crisp apple as well. And then we have the daily nutritional support. And if the child weighs 75 pounds, I would do one scoop. Child weighs 30, 40 pounds, I would do a half a scoop. That's it. You'll get all your B vitamins there. You'll already get a good amount of zinc. I would add a little bit more, probably five to 10 milligrams a day of zinc. And I would add in magnesium. I would do one capsule of full spectrum magnesium at night, or I would do one teaspoon of magnesium citrate at night. You could give more, especially if the child has a lot of anxiety, okay? You absolutely could do more, but I would start there. And I would do a half a teaspoon of liquid omega-3 because you can just mix it in with food. For my girls, that's all we do. We use a quarter of a teaspoon because they're still small. Quarter to a half a teaspoon. That's what we do. Every single night, they they get their EPA and DHA. So here's the thing. That works phenomenally well. Get rid of the food dyes. Get rid of the processed sugar. Get rid of the dairy. Get rid of the gluten. And you may have to get rid of the eggs, but you probably want to do a food sensitivity test for that. 
you will see remarkable results in most children. I would not say that to you if I did not see it in clinical practice over and over and over. Here's what you can do though. If you run the starter kit with any child, you're going to get exact data for vitamins and minerals as well as heavy metals, and it's going to look at dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin byproduct markers. I'm telling you, this is state-of-the-art lab testing. It's a simple urine test. Again, I've done it with my daughters, and also a hair tissue mineral analysis that I've done with them as well. It looks at copper toxicity. So many children with ADHD, ADD, other executive functioning, and other mood-based issues, as well as autism, autistic kids get great benefit from the same exact protocol have issues with those neurotransmitters. They have issues with heavy metals. They have elevated levels of copper towards zinc. They have lower levels of magnesium as opposed to calcium. These are all things that are very correctable, but you have to know what you're looking for first. It's called a starter kit. You can check it out yourself. Again, you're welcome to run it with any knowledgeable-based practitioner, but not every doctor that can run the lab knows how to give the correct protocol. That's why I always give you the protocol. I'm giving you the protocol right now. Right, I'm giving it to you, but I would love you to get your own personalized support if you're able to. Again, not everyone's able to. So what I'm trying to do is create multiple parameters here that most people can work within. And I don't want to ever set up obstacles. And I don't want this to be elitist. I want people to be able to do this all over the world. And what is in the Adrenal Soothe-based product? You, well, you can, do, you can do one in the morning, one at lunch, one at dinner, or even just one in the morning, one at dinner. You can start to use it just at, at night, whatever works for you. But what does it contain? Well, it contains things like L-theanine. It contains things like ashwagandha. It contains phospholocerine, which helps calm cortisol levels. I mean, again, these are herbal-based products that we know work. How do we know? Well, they've been studied and they have the science behind it, just like I showed you with the saffron. So remember, there's an answer for everything. I really believe that. I honestly believe that. And if you haven't found the answer with what you're currently doing right now, keep searching. I'm telling you right now, it's out there. You can find it. You can do this and you can help you and your family heal. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll link everything up today at episode 1302, whether it be a lab test, whether it be the community detox, whether it be saffron, you name it, I will link it up there with my team. Thank you so much. I hope this has been helpful. Happy to answer questions. Head on over to cabralsupportgroup.com. We'll answer them over there and uh, enjoy your weekend. We'll talk tomorrow with our first Cabral house call. Take care, everyone. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues. After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.